I, I really wanted to go to film school after art school and I looked at all the major schools and Columbia was the one that talked the most about writing and directing actors. That coupled with Milos Forman, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest was such an important movie in my youth and I, I just felt that it was the interesting place to go. I really wanted to make a student film that was longer than three minutes. I could only afford to buy about four rolls of film, so I decided to make a film that was largely in one take. Welcome to the shrine. Wow. <laughs> I thought, well, if I shoot it in one take, I can afford roughly three rolls of 16 millimeter film. That's about all I had the money for, and maybe build a tiny set and shoot uh, like a one take movie with a lot of camera moves in it, kind of a mini rope. Um, the, my joke at the time was that I was going to call it twine. The film takes place at a party, um, and it's the room where everyone throws their coats. So the party's happening outside of the room, and everyone's coming in to drop their coats off or have conversations, or in Andy's case, he's a kleptomaniac, and he's coming in to steal purses and wallets. The magazine of the, on the film camera was 11 minutes long, but your script was about 13 minutes long. So he had to find a place to do a cut there, but that first 11 minutes had to be um, done right and shot it three times. The first time, I think a piece of the set fell down. The second time, a PA walked through a window, which was a little, you know, we didn't have CGI to paint him out. Um, and the third time, everyone got it right. So I put in a swish pan in the last like couple of minutes so I could hide a cut. So we shot the first 11 minutes three times and then the last like two minutes a couple of times. Right. I remember the day he did his edit, which was cutting one piece of the 11-minute part with the two-minute part, and saying, I'm going upstairs to do my edit now. People were like slaving in the days of steam backs and bins with film strips hanging down and keeping track of everything. He sort of slightly kind of gloating a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to go do my edit now. And he went upstairs and came back, did my edit. <laughs> and yep. uh, Picture that was locked. it. Picture locked. Yeah. Well, I think Columbia was really focused on writing and directing of actors. As, as the first step to storytelling. There were things about how to break down a scene, um, work with actors, writing concepts that come back to me all the time, things teachers said. Uh, we were talking before about David Mamet, and he, you know, he stole this from, I believe, Aristotle, but uh, he said the, the denouement of a film should always be surprising but inevitable. And I think that, about that constantly when I'm working on a movie, how to make the shape of a scene or, or the entire arc of a story surprising but inevitable to the audience, so they feel that they didn't see it coming, but it couldn't have ended any other way, because that's, you know, is truly, uh, can be truly cathartic. And, um, you know, there are ideas that came up then, um, because I had these amazing teachers, because I had really interesting, smart classmates that inform everything I do still. Uh,